I've talked in other videos about forgiveness and today we're going to talk about forgiveness but from a different perspective or a different angle. Today we're going to look at forgiveness from the, from the perspective of thinking that we are owed an apology from someone. And this behavior, this practice, whatever you want to call it, is very prevalent nowadays, uh, very prevalent in Western society at least. Um, watch the news, read the newspaper, just listen to people talk, and you'll hear very often people demanding an apology. Uh, it's happening right now in politics, uh, on the drive over here, uh, listening to the news on the radio, and it seems that one of our candidates for president had said something a few days ago, and now there are organizations, groups, activists, all quote unquote demanding an apology for what this candidate said. Um, recently there was something that happened with a sports professional who did something on social media or on Twitter and there was all kinds of outcry demanding an apology. So, so what is this about? What's happening? Well, it really doesn't benefit us or help us in our growth in any way to try to analyze or look at someone else's experience or to look at why. Why are people demanding an apology? I mean, there, there's, there's wisdom in that and, and there's something to be gained from it, but I, my experience has shown that it's much more powerful and much more um, awakening and enlightening and it offers a lot more clarity to go inward and to look at our experience, my experience. What's happening with me? And I can do that in two different instances. One is to look at what's happening in me, with me, when I witness others demanding an apology. Uh, do I join in? Do I, do I feel that an apology is warranted? All of those types of things. And the other way to look at it is from the perspective of when I myself am in that position where I'm thinking, believing that someone owes me an apology. And that word O oh, is very interesting. Um, it has to do with debt, it has to do with um, obligation, all kinds of other things. So there's many ways to look at this and, and the key is just to bring awareness to it. And I say this over and over because that's the practice. That's, it, it's, it's so powerful. So we can begin to, to look at what is our experience when we think or we believe that we are owed an apology. And how do I, how do I look at my experience? Well, it's, it's a three-pronged process. I can look at, check in and say, what am I feeling? What are the physical sensations in my body? And, and the more we do this, the more we start to establish baselines so that we can measure our, our current experience against past. There, there's nothing else to measure it against. And that helps us to determine what is for us a peaceful experience and what isn't. So we can look in internally, physically, and see what, it, what is happening. Are my legs tight? Is my heart rate up? Uh, has my breathing changed? Uh, how am I holding my hands? Am I comfortable in the chair? Wh whatever it may be. And the more you do this, the more you'll start to, to notice what the baselines are for you. Uh, the second thing we can look at is what are the thoughts that I'm having? So what are the thoughts that I'm believing that foster or support this notion that I'm owed an apology? And those thoughts are going to be all over the spectrum. And they're going to be unique to you. So it's a very wonderful process because it allows us to get to know ourselves better. Um, it brings us to another level of self-honesty. And, and accepting who we are in any given moment. So what are the thoughts that I'm having or that I'm believing that are telling me that I'm owed an apology? And then the third thing is, what are the emotions um, or feelings? Feelings tend to be more surface. They tend to be more fleeting. Emotions tend to run deeper. Um, if we're being reactive in the moment, it tends to be reactive to feelings which come from thoughts. Um, 
more long-term things my experience has shown tend to be based in emotion. And that's another subject. So what are the feelings that I'm having? Um, am I happy? Am I sad? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I feeling unworthy? Uh, am I feeling diminished? Whatever it might be. Now, typically, I have found that when I'm in a place where I believe someone owes me an apology, it is the result of some sense of diminishment. And I've talked about diminishment before as well in other videos. And it's this fleeting experience of somehow I'm less now than I was before. Um, what we call this or, or label this in the world is um, I'm offended. And being offended is really, really popular right now. And, it, and um, we're in this we're in this pattern of projecting that out, that somehow the other person is responsible for my experience of being offended. And that's what drives the, the thinking or the belief. And I say belief because if I get entrenched in, in thinking someone owes me apology, an apology, it has to be a belief. It has to be a thought that I've had for a long period of time. And that's really what belief is, that others are responsible somehow for the experience that I'm having. And so when someone says or does something and I find myself, we find ourselves drawn to or, or trapped into this sense of they owe me an apology. This person owes me an apology. Well, that's a beautiful time to, as I just said, to go inward and look at what is my experience while I'm demanding this apology. We can also look at what's taking place, um, what got us to that point. And, and this, once you start to look at it and you bring awareness to it, you, you, you'll quickly begin to realize uh, the, insan the insanity of the behavior. But it's considered normal. And, and it's only through looking where we can start to recognize that, that this behavior I'm going to explain in a second really has no value. And the reason we attach to it is we somehow believe that it does have value, that it, that it gives us something, that it brings something to us might be justification, we might call it justice, we might call it fairness, whatever it might be. So what's happening in the process? Well, well, typically in the process is someone, I say something, someone says something to me or someone does something, I feel this sense of diminishment and somehow I'm less now than I was before. I label that as I'm offended, they were rude, um, they shouldn't have done that and that's a huge category of all kinds of possible behaviors, statements, actions, whatever it might be. So I label whatever it is. So let's say they said something. I interpret what they said in the manner that I just expressed. And then quickly I jump to um, not feeling good. I don't, I don't like the experience of diminishment. Um, so somehow I have to get rid of that. And the way I get rid of it is I project it out and I say, okay, it's not me, it's the other person. This person is now responsible. And, and that's the sad part. And that's the part that leaves us suffering because we're passing the responsibility for our level of peace, for our experience. We're passing that, giving it to another person. And we're saying, I can be peaceful when you do this. So, you know, of course, in Miracles phrases it perfectly and it says, when you condemn another, you imprison yourself and you make a jailer of the other. And I love that. That's so profound that I'm handing this other person the keys to my peace and all they have to do is apologize and I can be peaceful again. Even saying it feels uncomfortable to me. People do what they do. People say what they say. I, I can't know their intent. Now the world's going to tell me I can't. But the truth of the matter is I can't know their intent and, and their intent doesn't matter. What matters is my level of peace. And in determining what they said, receiving what they said as, as something that somehow diminishes me or makes me less than what I am, it, it's crazy making. And then to project that out and say that they're now responsible and the only way I can be peaceful is if they apologize. It can be a cycle that just spirals and spirals and spirals. So where's the gift? The gift is not in looking at everyone else's 
stuff. The gift is not in aligning with that politician or aligning with the people who are demanding an apology from the politician. If you find yourself doing that, it's a wonderful opportunity again to pause and go inward and say, what is my experience right now while I'm believing and joining in that this person must apologize? You will find that if you pause and look at your experience, it's not a peaceful experience. And that's the bottom line. Another aspect of the gift is looking again at my experience. Not when it's someone else owing someone else an apology. That's a wonderful opportunity. And if I want to go deeper, we can go inward and look when we're feeling or believing the thought that we're owed an apology. And, and, and it's, it's kind of pointless to get into the debate whether we are or whether we aren't. That, that's beside the point. That's ego going, stay up in your head, think about it, try to figure it out. Not a whole lot of growth and not a whole lot of change comes from there. The change comes when we go inward and we look at what is our experience. What is my experience in this moment while I'm believing this person owes me an apology? My personal experience has been when I'm in that place, I'm not peaceful. I'm edgy. I, I, I feel tension. I feel anxiety. I'm replaying over and over and over that scene that, you know, whatever it was, the person said something or did something. And every time I replay it over, the anxiety increases, the, the, the sense of being owed increases. And it's just, it's, it, it's just yuck. I don't, know how, I don't know how else to say it. It's just yuck. That's good. Um, and that's the gift to bring awareness to the yuck to bring awareness to the less than peaceful experience. And when I do that, the more often, and I don't have to do anything else, the more often that we bring awareness to it and allow ourselves to continue in that experience. You may stop and, and after you bring awareness, it might all just go away. That's, that's wonderful if that happens. It may not, it may continue, but you brought awareness to it. And in bringing the awareness, the more often that we bring the awareness to it, the more often that we look, the more often that we go in and we gauge our experience, we will naturally notice that the need for someone else to apologize or the sense of being owed an apology starts to diminish. And then we're off into a whole nother realm, uh, if you want, to explore how cool that is. That what used to bother me, that what I used to define as offensive, no longer offends me and I'm able to let the person be who they are in this moment without judgment, without condemnation. They're peaceful, I'm peaceful, and now I can meet them for who they are. And even better than that, I'm meeting myself on levels I never have before.